Hey everybody, Jeff with Covet the Camper. It's been a few days since my last video. It's actually been a, almost two weeks since my last video, uh, since I recorded my last video. Uh, been doing some thinking on what I want to do with this truck camper. So I'm going to kind of let you in on some of the ideas that I have and what I might do. You know, a lot of this stuff might not get done or, uh, you know, some of these ideas might change, but this is kind of along the lines of what I want to go with on this truck camper. So if you guys are just joining me, if you this is your first time here on the channel, I've got a 2003 Fleetwood Elkhorn 11J. It's a, a 12 foot truck camper with a single slide out on the driver's side there. And uh, extensively modified. I've done a whole bunch of rot repairs, uh, the previous videos on completely rebuilding this slide out, um, completely rebuilding this entire shoulder, um, including adding, uh, strengthening and adding uh, grade eight bolts to the tie down brackets. I've rebuilt this, this side skirt uh, using composite materials. And by the way, the slide out and the shoulder, those are all uh, waterproof materials, um, either plastics uh, and fiberglass or a combination of the two. And uh, you see my back patio there that folds out. It's a tri-fold patio. I've rebuilt this side skirt using composite material. And uh, this shoulder as well. Uh, all composite material, fiberglass, uh, and plastics. So, uh, a couple of things that I'm doing here. Um, one of them is moving all of my, this used to be the generator compartment, and then it had this big steel box in it. And when I rebuilt this shoulder, I decided this is where all of my electronics are going to live. So I've got lithium ion batteries going in. I'll have my uh, solar charge controller with um, most likely 400, uh, 400 roof mount watts of solar and a, an additional 100 ground mount. So 500 watts of solar total. Uh, I'll have a uh, 2000 watt inverter and uh, my my lithium uh, my lifepo battery so um, lithium iron phosphate batteries will live in this compartment as well um, this area here i'm going to install a plug for my new noco 12 volt charger for the lifepo batteries and uh, uh, just a few other things so I ended up purchasing the NOCO Genius 5 uh, battery charger maintainer, and this one has a setting for uh, lithium. And uh, so that'll, that'll uh, live in the compartment with all the other electronics and be connected to the battery uh, permanently with uh, the ring connectors. And I purchased the NOCO uh, GCP1, which is the, the plug that I'm gonna mount uh, to the outside of the the truck camper skirt. Uh, if you watch my other videos, that's what that's what this little patch is for. It's just covering the hole right now. But that plugs. I'm gonna. I'll have a larger plate here because I'm putting a 12 volt plug here, a, a 12 volt receptacle, and then my Noco uh, plug for the charger, so I can just run an extension cord over, plug in, and my batteries can charge off of either my generator or shore power if available. So that'll be uh, that plug there. Uh, purchased uh, this little 12 volt, uh, waterproof 12 volt outlet um, that'll be wired in and wired to the battery as well for my ground mount solar panel. And then the plug with the Anderson connector, the 12 volt plug with the Anderson connector that plugs into this guy so just kind of easy plug and play stuff so I don't have to open up that compartment to run my ground mount solar panel uh, to the battery got a couple of uh, 
isolator switches. So I'll have a, I've already got an isolator switch on the, on the solar, but I don't really like, I don't really like the, the type of switch that it is. It's just a breaker, 30 amp. And uh, so I'm gonna swap that out for, you know, one of these battery uh, selector on off switches. Um, I did purchase another uh, waterproof 40 amp breaker. This is actually gonna go to my air compressor uh, that's mounted on my truck. So I'll show that in another video, but that's gonna be another uh, option. And actually that's another reason why I purchased this plug, this set here, because my I've wired my uh, air compressor, my Smitty built air compressor um, with uh, Anderson plugs, so or Anderson connector, so I can just plug right into that, run my air compressor off of my lithium batteries if I want to. Got a couple of bus bars. Um, just these are actually really cool. Um, you've got a whole bunch of you know, got a couple of main connections, and then a whole bunch of little connectors uh, to you know connect various. Various 12 volt accessories. And then last but not least, I've purchased, uh, I've actually purchased three of these um, Lossagy uh, lithium iron phosphate deep cycle batteries. So it's the 12 volt 100 amp hour. I'll have 300 amp hours of lithium. Um, the reason why I didn't go with the all in one, the 300 amp hour, you know, the big, the big battery pack was I wanted to be able to um, distribute the weight a little bit. So these might all, not all live in the same compartment. I might have one of these down in the basement or potentially even two of these down in the basement. Um, in this camper, I've got a, a pretty good sized basement uh, underneath the slide out. Uh, the slide out's in right now, so you can't really see it. But this compartment here, I can lift it up. It goes way down in there, it's deep. So I might, you know, throw a couple of those batteries down in there. Um, they're lightweight, they're only 23 and a half pounds. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but you know, if I can get get them, you know, in front of the uh, rear wheels, uh, that would help with uh, weight just a little bit. And then of course I'm redoing the roof on this truck camper, so. I'm going to be doing a, an entire roof job, redeck, um, kind of re-engineering some of the trusses a little bit, um, taking off the air conditioner from the roof, um, and I'll explain that in a minute. But that's going to be gone. I'm installing, um, I've got a couple of these Max fans, the Max Fan Deluxe uh, powered fans. So they're not the rain sensor uh, versions, but they uh, they do open and close um with you know you can leave them open when it's raining uh, just because they're they're kind of a sealed uh cover so those are pretty cool of course new sewer vent caps uh i purchased because i did all this before i realized exactly what i wanted to do uh, i did purchase a air conditioner gasket kit because i thought that air conditioner was going to go back on the roof it's not going to, um, but I got the new uh, refrigerator vent cover and uh, the uh, base. I'm doing all new decking, uh, so the whole, entire roof's getting stripped. So all the rubber, all of the the old OSB uh, deck is all getting ripped off. Everything's coming off the roof. I'm going to re-insulate where I need to re-insulate, uh, run some 12 volt wires, uh, where I need to for solar and for uh, the additional max air fan that I'm putting in uh, where that air conditioner was. And um, just a couple other little things, some kind of a custom bracket uh, set for my solar uh, array that I'm putting on the roof. So I have a, a few hundred watts, you know, probably 400 watts of solar on the roof. And uh, I'll need uh, a bracket system for that. The whole roof's going to get redecked with uh, Baltic birch plywood. It's uh, a much better material to use uh, for an RV roof. It's much more expensive, but uh, 
and and actually in in the form that it comes when you buy it from the uh you know the hardwood dealer it's it's heavier than osb however I, i'm going to channel the half inch uh, with a router to kind of lighten it up a little bit and um, I, I tried to find some quarter inch Baltic birch in four by eight sheets, but I couldn't find it anywhere in my area. Um, it's, uh, there, there's a pretty big shortage of Baltic birch anyway, uh, but I could find the, the half inch in four by eight sheets. And I'm just gonna, you know, router out some areas uh, over the trusses. Uh, so it fits down in the, uh, on the trusses uh, at the level it needs to be with the sidewall and the front cap and rear cap and uh, you know glued and screwed down to uh, those trusses. Um, anyway, the Baltic birch is a, a much better material to use. I'll show you why. So I've been using Baltic birch uh, for the last 20 some odd years, 23 years, 25 years. Um, it's a void free plywood. It's, it's relatively lightweight but it's a it's a you know a solid hardwood plywood and they use waterproof glue in the manufacturing process so this is a piece of half inch uh, it's nine ply no voids and uh, this is a piece of quarter inch and it's five ply um, let's see yeah five ply no voids yeah so i think that's going to be a, a superior material to use for my truck camper roof. Um, and a couple of videos ago, I was up on the roof just kind of explaining uh, why I need to redo the roof. So there are a couple of soft spots, one in the front corner um, of the driver's side at the cab over, and then one in this there above the ladder. Uh, there's a uh, uh, another small soft spot. It's actually not really that small. It's pretty big. It's about almost... Uh, two feet long, but only about four, four inches on one end and then about six inches on the other end. So there's a, uh, you know, just some areas that need to be redone. So in that same video, when I was showing the roof, I mentioned that uh, we might be interested in selling this truck camper uh, when, you know, when I've redone the roof and the other little things that I was going to do to kind of upgrade the electrical system and things like that. And I just got to thinking, and you know, I'd, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions on this. Our, our thought was to uh, sell this truck camper and the truck and go to, you know, something more along the lines of an F-150 Lightning or a Tesla Model Y that has a towing capacity. Um, and a small travel trailer so something like a, a casita uh or you know even um you know live in light or camp light travel trailers they don't make those anymore but uh, they're, they're all aluminum uh, i think thor purchased them a few years back and then they just stopped making them after a while uh probably right around covid but you know we those are pretty lightweight travel trailers they were sub 2500 pound uh, and could easily be pulled by a uh, Ford F-150 Lightning or a Tesla Model Y. So our, our idea behind that was that we could travel and we'd have, you know, a certain amount of solar, probably, you know, maybe anywhere between 600 and 1,000 watts of, of roof solar and then uh, maybe a couple hundred watts of ground mount panel uh, to charge the system. So... Uh, with that, you know, comes a, a lot of challenges where I feel we're, we're really close to being in a place where, you know, that's feasible, but, but not quite, um, you know, the, the, uh, charging stations are, are, are pretty, you know, thick around here, uh, in the West, but, um, you know, they're, they're not everywhere. And, uh, we just we just don't want to be in that situation where there's you know some serious range anxiety in either a Tesla or a Ford F-150 Lightning. So there's a lot of videos out there, you know, with uh, people that that travel with their Tesla Model Y pulling a like a Casita or a lightweight travel trailer, and you know there there's pros and cons to that. So this thing's paid for. 
<laughs> and the truck's been paid for for years. So um, I just don't see, I, I'm going back and forth with that. So I, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Uh, you know, seriously, what your thoughts on that, if, if, if anybody's done any research on it. Um, I personally feel that keeping the truck and the truck camper for the time being um, is probably the better, um, better way to go. So with that being said, it got me thinking uh, about making this camper more efficient um, or, you know, getting rid of some of the systems that I wasn't really comfortable with having in the truck camper like propane. Um, now, I, I've been in the RV industry since I was 19 years old. I'm in my 50s now. Uh, I've, I've built RVs on an assembly line for better part of a decade. I'm a, an RV technician. I'm also a, a certified uh, RV inspector, and I've been doing this for several years. And I, I know that these systems are safe. That's not really my concern. It's um, really, it's just kind of dwindling down the amount of, or the types of energy that you're gonna use to power your RV. So. Having an all-electric coach or an all-electric truck camper just seems really appealing to me. There are some challenges with that, though, like battery storage and, you know, solar panels, uh, real estate on the roof, uh, having enough room to be able to generate that kind of power. So one of the ideas that I had would be, obviously, up on the roof, uh, having that rack system where I could put, you know, maybe three panels, uh, you know, one in front of the other, three deep, and then having that tiered. So there's three panels on top of three panels on uh, a sliding rack. So when, when I'm parked um, or when I'm driving, the, the top three panels will be charging the system. Uh, when I'm parked, those uh, top three panels or the bottom three panels will be on rollers and they'll slide out from under or out, out from the top of the other three. So that'll be 600 watts that can be slid out and then I can have a couple of other uh, options for you know maybe some, some flat panels, uh, flexible flat panels uh, on the front cap uh, or additional ground panels uh, more than what I currently have. So that would generate, you know, I could, I could potentially get about 1200 watts of, uh, of of solar energy coming in um, or 1200 watts of panels and you know depending on what uh, you know what kind of sun's hitting those panels what time of day it is um, you know if there's tree cover uh, anywhere probably I'm guessing between uh, about 500 and about a thousand watts coming into the batteries so propane systems I've got a furnace a water heater, my three burner cooktop and oven, and my old trusty three-way Dometic Royale. So this is a three-way system. It operates on propane, 12 volt or 120 volt uh, AC. So, um, you know, this is actually a really good refrigerator. It's, it's pretty efficient. Um, and I really like having the options of running uh, 12 volt going down the road so I don't have to have my propane on um, running down the highway or going over bridges or we do you know stuff up in the Pacific Northwest where we're getting on a ferry and uh, you know there's challenges with that and then also getting rid of the propane system altogether would lighten the load quite a bit so I've got two uh, 30 pound tanks uh, plus all of the you know the propane line that's plumbed throughout this camper. That's quite a bit of weight. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere right around, oh, you know, 85 to 100 pounds that I can lighten this load. And um, uh, a couple of things that I've thought about were the reasons why I'd like to get rid of the propane and go all electric would be just to free up some space. And lighten the load. So with this cooktop and the the oven gone, you know, this is a lot of extra countertop space. And 
if you've watched my other videos, you know that I redid this countertop and, um, you know, it's the original countertop. It does have some issues because it is particle board and just over time it has gotten a, a little bit of a concave to it, which it's a couple of things, you know, one is aesthetically it's, it's kind of annoying to me to have that slight concave. It's just ever so slight, but you know, it's, uh, you can't really see underneath here, but it's particle board. And um, it, it creates a problem when I'm using my sink. I've always got water pulled up in the back of this area here because, you know, it's sloped in. So I'd like to rebuild this countertop. And getting this out of here and re and building a, uh, a, a laminated countertop, a uh, one-piece laminated countertop, would just be really cool. I think I could I could do some nice wood, uh, laminated cedar or pine or whatever, um, you know, and and shape it. You know how pretty much how it's shaped now uh, because of these drawers and uh, uh, all the all the other storage areas in this area. Um, but then I could have just a, a really large area here for a one or a two burner um, uh, electric cooktop. And I've used, I've used this, you can see I'm storing stuff in there now because that's how often I use it. We've owned this truck camper for almost 12 years now and we've used this twice, uh, the, the oven. We use the cooktop all the time, love the cooktop, um, other than it being propane, uh, I, I think that, you know, having a cooktop is awesome, use it a lot, just don't use the just don't use the oven. So that's just, to me, wasted space. Um, to be able to open this up and build out a, another shelf uh, system in here would be really cool. And that thing weighs about 40 pounds, right? Right about 40 pounds um, with the, you know, the accessories, the the grill and um, the, the top grate for the burners and all that stuff. It's about 40 pounds. And um, an induction cooktop, you know, a two burner induction cooktop, weighs uh, about six pounds. So I'm saving some weight there. Big weight savings, uh, especially up high. This roof air conditioner weighs about 109 pounds. So uh, including this inside piece um, and then, you know, the actual air conditioner uh, guts up on the top on the roof. Having all that gone um, would be uh, about 109, 108, 109 pounds off the roof. Um, and then of, of course, I'm going to be putting that max air fan here. Those max air fans don't weigh very much. I think they're right around, uh, seven or eight pounds. So you're probably asking, well, Jeff, what are you going to do for an air conditioner? And, um, I'm going to put in a, I've actually done quite a bit of research. I've watched, um, you know, a lot of, uh, other YouTubers out there, van life YouTubers and some, some other, uh, YouTubers that do. Uh, overlanding and stuff in those 5,000 BTU air conditioners in this small space would be perfect. They're, they only use about 450 watts on high um, and um, about 60 watts on the fan mode. I think 320 watts in low cool. Um, I have never... I've never had to use that air conditioner on high. It, on low, it'll freeze you out of this camper. It's a not a not a huge space. So um, I'll show you what my ideas are, are on that. So out here is my propane compartment. I've got that towel on there. So I've got two 30-pound tanks in this poly tub. Um, when these tanks are full, you know they they're with the propane and the tanks themselves there, you know, it's pretty close to 70 pounds. Um, that's just, you know, it's, it's more than, than I want to have. And I just don't want to have propane anymore. Um, so that space is right across to this panel right here. Uh, this is a drawer that it's going to stay a drawer. Um, what I, kind of my junk drawer actually um, but this panel right here uh, is um, just on the on the other side of where those propane tanks are so this is that poly 
you can see I've got that propane door open and this is that poly container um, that that would all be out of the camper with the propane that would all go away and then I could trim out this piece right here to mount that 5000 BTU air conditioner and uh, I, I know what model I want I've actually already ordered it and um, so I'm I'm going to trim this out, have the air conditioner uh, in this area down here uh, with a baffle system to allow fresh air draw from the sides and uh, exhaust out when I want to use the air conditioner. So um, the, uh, the air conditioner that I'm uh, purchased, that I've already purchased is actually a digital thermostat. So, and it's got a remote control that I can, you know, hang on the wall. Um, so when I want to run the air conditioner, all I would do, of course, all this propane stuff would be gone, is uh, flip open this door, yeah. and then I'll have a baffle system on the sides that'll allow fresh air to be drawn in to the air conditioner. There's going to be a lot of testing with that, um, some trial and error stuff, I know. There's uh, a guy, Dave, uh, with Endgame Campers. Check him out on YouTube, Endgame. Um, he builds some amazing truck campers and uh, he builds them all by hand himself in his garage. Uh, he's in the desert southwest and he's done several of these air conditioners uh, in kind of the way that I'm thinking of. I've gotten a lot of ideas from him. Uh, he's got a, a, you know, he's put put a lot of thought into it and he's actually done a lot of testing on it already. So um, maybe I can improve upon it. Maybe I can't. Um, it, it seems like, you know, there's it, it, pretty straightforward as far as keeping the exhaust away from the intake. Um, you know, there's no nasty fumes. It's just a matter of heat. You want the hot air to go away and the intake air to be cooler. Um, so the air conditioner doesn't have to work as hard to cool the air that's blowing into the truck camper. You know, I, I really want to do it right. Um, there's just some really great ideas already out there. And uh, I can take a lot of those ideas and implement them for, you know, my specific build. Um, you know, the, the kind of thermodynamics around, uh, you know, putting in an air conditioner, it's really not that complex, but every situation is going to be a little bit different. So, you know, I'll just have to, like I said, have some trial and error. Uh, been thinking about some kind of slide out panels that, you know, will will pull out um, when you open up that compartment door that you slide out some panels that are in a track to separate the exhaust air from the intake air. Uh, and that's one of the ideas that Dave from Endgame Campers had on his channel. Uh, it's a, it's a great idea. It's simple and effective. So that might be something I'll, I'll kind of, uh, you know, do some experiments with to see if it works. All right, boy, whew, this video is kind of long winded, I know, but, uh, so that takes care of the air conditioner. I'm thinking about something else for the furnace. Now this is the area where my furnace lives, um, kind of down in this area, all the ducting and everything is back behind this panel. The furnace is actually right down there. Uh, and then that's the intake. So everybody knows about these diesel heaters. Um, I've been thinking about the all-in-one diesel heater that's got the integrated fuel tank, fuel pump, uh, muffler, and all that stuff. Um, it's a, a, I think it's a 5 kW uh, burner uh, diesel and a 5 liter tank. So that would fit perfectly in this same area. And uh, since my truck is diesel, I can, you know, easily fill the tank while I'm at the station uh, or carry a, a jerry can with a little bit of extra diesel with me, which is probably not a bad idea to do anyway. And the exhaust can still run out this same port. I can still leave this same cover on there. I'll just have to build a little baffle, you know, back behind there because the furnace will come out, uh, which... It has the integrated baffle. So I'll just build a little baffle out of some sheet metal and uh, run the muffler out this hole. So now let's move on to the water heater idea that I have. And again, this is just taking some of the ideas that I found already online. Um, there's a 
some overlanding guys that have already done this in their big rigs and seems like a pretty good idea. Uh, they've already tested it, so all I have to do is buy the parts and make it fit in my application. I've got this old Atwood water heater. This is the six gallon and uh, you know, just kind of fits right back in there. I haven't insulated the bottom of it yet because I started thinking about what I wanted to do with this. And uh, my idea is to remove this water heater altogether that's propane and uh, install the Ream 2.5 gallon electric water heater. But do a little bit of modifications to it first. So uh, it's got the, I think it's a 1300 watt electric element, the AC uh, 120 volt electric element uh, that's come stock with. So you take that element out and uh, you can order a, a dual element 600 watts. So it's, it's dual pole, uh, 300 watt, 300 watt. So I can either just hook up one side and just have a 300 watt DC, uh, 12 volt DC element, or uh, I can um, flip a switch and have uh, both elements going for 600 watts. So depending on how fast I needed the water to heat up or, you know, from uh, what temperature, you know, starting temperature as far as ambient goes to like, you know, 100 degrees, 105 degrees, um, I could do it that way. I uh, got the idea from, uh, there's a couple of people online, but the one that I, I really like because they were kind of using the the same element that I wanted to use. Uh, their channel is called Everlanders, and they've got a, a killer uh, overlanding rig, and they've got this set up in their rig, and they seem to be happy with it. Uh, the Ream 2.5-gallon uh, water heater, I think, is right around, at least in my area, is right around 275 bucks. So... You know, it's less expensive than a new RV style water heater or a tankless water heater. And, you know, those, most of those anyway, use uh, propane uh, or diesel to uh, heat the water. So, you know, I, I didn't want to do propane. My whole idea behind this is to get rid of all the propane systems to lighten the load somewhat and simplify my uh, types of fuel. I'll, uh, Put a link just in the description below just the stuff that i'm kind of thinking about doing i don't know if i'm actually gonna end up doing all this stuff this is all kind of pie in the sky you know <laughs> bright ideas that uh <laughs> might fail um but you know it's just things that i'm jotting down uh, ideas to uh kind of make this camper a little bit more updated if i'm going to keep it you know i want it a certain way and um you know, I, I really like the way the interior uh, turned out. I'm still going to make a couple of changes. Like I said earlier in the video, I really want to redo that countertop, uh, which is going to give me a lot more space for prepping food, uh, things like that. You know, uh, having the uh, induction cooktop that's portable, I can move outside. You know, if, if I want to cook outside instead of inside, I can do it out here on the back patio or out on a table, table or whatever. I just think that's going to be a better setup for me um, and probably won't hurt the resale value too much. Uh, having a lot of these updated systems, especially with the solar and the uh, LifePo 4 batteries, the lithium iron phosphate batteries, just going to make things uh, a lot better and, um, you know, especially for, you know, off-grid boondocking. Okay, so wow, that was like a super long-winded video. I apologize for that. I know that uh, a lot of you guys out there don't like to hear me talk. Uh, it can be you know, a little long-winded and annoying at times, but I wanted to kind of get all this stuff on one video just so I can document it and figure out what I'm going to end up doing down the road. But I think some of these ideas are pretty good. Let me know in the comments section below what you guys think. Uh, if you have any good ideas uh, or, you know, maybe some things that I should, you know, modify on my ideas to make it work a little bit better for me, um, I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So anyway, I'll uh, catch you guys on the next video. Later.